On the surface, these two systems look rather similar. Both have 12 inch monochrome screens. Both have a sphinx like stance on the desk. Both have a mouse. Both were on sale in 1984. And they even have a similar looking graphical interface. But if we look closer, some big differences start to show. Let's take a look. This is an Apple Lisa 2. It uses a Motorola 68000 processor running at 5 MHz. It has 2 MB of RAM, a bitmap display, Sony 3.5 inch floppy, and 10 MB of hard disk storage. The Lisa was Apple's first computer with a graphical interface and a mouse. Next to the Lisa is an NCR PC4. This was NCR's first true PC compatible. Following up on the Decision Mate line of CPM machines, the PC4 used the case from a Decision Mate 5, but has an XT class motherboard with an 8088 running at 4.77 MHz. This system has 640K of RAM, Hercules graphics, and an XT IDE with solid state storage. The Lisa was criticized for being too expensive and too slow. I think all the work Apple put into the software resulted in something rather special. Uh, to show you, I'd like to do something simple on both machines. Prepare a small word processing document and put a picture in it. So on the NCR we'll fire up Gem and we land at the desktop. Open up Gem Right. Land at a blank document. Go and type some stuff. And now we'll insert a picture. So to do that, you go into the file menu and choose insert graphics. Now unfortunately, there is no way to preview what your graphics are going to look like. So we need to save our document and exit out of Gemrite because Gem is only a single tasking operating system. let that save and we can quit. One thing that's interesting in GEM is the menus pull down as soon as you mouse over them. There's no uh, clicking on them or clicking and holding like on a, on a Mac. So I uh, began preparing an image earlier. I put it in this images folder. So we'll find that and open it up in uh, GEM, GEM Draw. open. And there we are. So we need to put a few more uh, touches on this graphic. Finish drawing the keyboard. One thing I found that's very annoying with this is it takes a moment after you click to start drawing. So you end up, you'll click and you'll start to drag and it, it won't start right away. So I'll we'll sort of do that one again. Click wait a moment there the same thing here up oh, well I need to turn off snap to grid and then we can get that corner of the machine looking about like it should and one other thing that's kind of annoying in this is there's no undo command so if you screw up you have to choose delete from the edit menu and remove your mistake. Finish drawing this. And there again, the mouse was kind of delayed. But we'll see, we do at least have a duplicate menu. Menu option. Finish this keyboard. And that's, that's probably close enough. So we'll go ahead and save this. 
while it's saving the mouse is unresponsive. Now we can quit GemDraw, go back to the desktop. Now, annoyingly, because we went down a folder, there's no way that I could see to go back up a folder within the UI. So we can't go to where our, our GemWrite document is in the document folder. But that's okay. We can just open the application. And then uh, open the file from there. Okay. Now we can insert our picture. Notice whenever you click the the cursor will move to that point. You have to be careful with that. So we'll drill down, find our picture, and insert it. There we go. Font looks like it changed a little bit. We can type underneath of it some. The slight flickering you're seeing is because this is a being an MDA display it runs at 50 Hertz and I could not get my camera to do a 50 Hertz refresh. So double clicking on a word does not select the whole word you have to click and drag precisely but we can go in and Make it italic if we want, change the size. There is no spell check. Look at our some of our other formatting preferences here. That all looks fine. Oops, the graphic went away for some reason. Hmm. And I don't see a repaginate command. So anyway, I'll pull up the About window on GemWrite so you can see what version we're using. This is 1.0 from 1985. Oh look, our graphic came back. That's nice. So cool. Well, let's quit GemWrite. And oops, we didn't save. But there's no way to save from this dialog. We have to cancel. Then we can go to File Save. And then say, yes, we want to save and now we can quit. I got a little ahead of the uh, UI here. Hold down a menu before it was finished drawing so I'll go back, let it finish. And this is Gem 1.2. The uh, trash icon is kind of interesting because it it's just essentially a delete command. It doesn't actually give you an undo. <laughs> um, I've not seen anything with an undo in this in this software. So we've just done the properties of the hard disk. We're waiting for it to count the free space. There it is. Okay, well that's enough of that. Let's try that on the Lisa now. So here we are at the startup screen. We'll let it start the office system. Both of these systems were starting up in real time. The uh, idea behind the 7.7 is that the seven applications included can work as one because you can copy paste between all of them. So what the lease is doing now is restoring the environment, putting all the icons back where they were when we turned the system off last. So there is no file new in the Lisa. To create a new document you pull up one of these templates, double click it, that tears off a copy and then you can name it what you want. I'm just going to file that in my documents folder away the templates and there's my new document we'll open that up in Lisa Write. 
just a moment, and we can type our little bit of text. Oops, there's a typo. Oh well. Now we'll do the same thing. Let's uh, insert some drawing that we've made. Uh, Lisa is multitasking, so I don't have to quit. I'm just going to set this aside, which will shrink it down to an icon on the desktop. And this desk menu is kind of neat. It acts like a dock where every icon that's on the desktop gets an icon and everything that is open gets a check mark. So I was able to pull up the image I prepared earlier. We'll copy that to the clipboard. Takes a moment. And then if I can remember my alphabet, I'll find the test document, pull that back up. And we can paste our picture in. There we go. So, let me check the spelling while we're here. I forgot for the spell check to work, you have to move the cursor to where you want it to start looking. So it didn't find anything wrong. So I'm going to use the save command. This is kind of like a checkpoint for the document. You don't actually ever have to save really on the Lisa. I'm going to take this image we're done with that so I'm going to put it away which will take it off of the desktop and put it back in the folder where it came from you'll see the little icon move across and there's the folder so I'll put the folder away let's uh, change this to italic why not And what I'm going to do now, we're done working, so I'll just push the power button on the Lisa. And it's going to file away all of the things that are open and things on the desktop. See, it puts that away. And the Lisa makes a point of doing an animation whenever it's moving icons around so that you're not concerned that, oh no, my, my stuff's all just been deleted. Nope, nope, it's putting it safely away on the hard disk finish up and then turn off so I wanted to show creating that graphic a little bit as well because I think this is kind of neat um, duplicate command we get a keyboard shortcut in Lisa draw and it the mouse is just feels much more fluid in in this software um, it's a lot easier to do what you want and just like modern software you've got ordering of your items we have an undo command imagine that and also have grouping of objects. So now that whole drawing we made is just one object. So, although these systems appear kind of physically similar, the software on the Lisa feels a lot more modern and is surprising to me that you sit down at the machine and it feels natural. I think the work Apple put into that really shows. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like more videos like this, let me know. I'd be happy to go into more depth on both of these systems.